103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 9th, and I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have a co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Oh, God. Is that an old car? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> And our guests today are uh, George Brooklyn and Red Pirate Hig. Welcome all. Our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Uh, Wombat, what are we talking about today? Today we're holding the question, are atheists accountable because we've and heard often, too. <laughs> yeah, we've heard a lot of times that they aren't. But listen, we last week's episode we had like almost nine people <laughs> coming onto the show, which means it's like we don't really get a chance to to really voice out stuff because it's a lot of people talking. But now we got like a nice solid four pack. I love this. This is great. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I want to start today's show off with an invocation and then getting to know everybody. So before we get into it, I'll throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Uh-huh. Monster, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the noodle to know the difference. <laughs> Ramen. Ramen. You got to have a good noodle. That's what the, yeah, the I just did at the end of the day. <laughs> yep. I want to go around and see how everybody's doing. First, first, and first most birthday boy over here with the uh, new haircut. <laughs> Larry, you're looking good. How, how are thanks. you doing? How you been? Oh, I'm doing fine. Uh, I've been getting out a little bit this week nice. since it's my birthday week. Got a haircut, uh, went mm-hmm. shopping, uh, did a lot of things. Actually, I spent a lot of time uh, this week on the deck, uh, you know, watering stuff and nice cleaning it up for the summer, for spring, summer, and fall, actually. And uh, just having a good time doing it all. Now, Larry, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think that's the real, that's the real question. Um a child again. <laughs> and I think I will succeed. When I get in my eighties, I'm planning on being a child again. <laughs> okay, nice, nice, nice. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. Dreadfire Higgs, how you been? Arr. How is your quest for chaos? Uh <laughs> basically. Uh the headband challenge, the uh, all the other projects you got going. I can't I can't I can't even speak to it. Fireman, yeah. guard, movie star, what's going on with you? Yeah, well, actually I just took uh, my uh my uh, drone flying license or your what your broom uh, flying drone. license yeah ground school for drone for flying drones i thought oh, you were cool. in canada flying i thought you said <laughs> broom flying license which is totally within the purview of what dread pirate would do but okay <laughs> yeah drone. so anyway I, I i took my ground school for that and i'm um, going to transport canada to write my test nice. and then i can fly these um super cool drones and uh, that'll help me in my security business and uh, potentially with uh, film um and yeah all that stuff. Absolutely. So, yeah so walk me Very through good. this drone flying i thought you could just buy one and fly one are you telling yeah, me, me too Canada no a it's all yeah it's all since 2019 it's all been licensed through transport canada no so you wow. can actually if you're caught flying a drone without a license you can get a thousand dollar fine. No way. Now I have to look up the licenses in Tennessee because it's only coming for us one day. It sounds yeah, like one, money one day it will. Yeah. One day yeah. it's like, uh, we can make money out of this. Uh, yeah. It's a source of revenue. <laughs> Buffalo. What do you got? Government. Uh, what question. Can, yeah. can you fly any size drone? Okay. That's a good question. So, uh, between 250 grams and 25 kilograms. That's literally every drone. Uh, 250 grams <laughs> it's so little there there are drones out there uh, that's are uh, they are designed on purpose to be 249 grams so it's just under the wire but they figure that is small enough not to be a serious risk to aircraft so oh so what, what, are the the linear, what are the linear linear directions of a 300 uh drone how far can you go out? What's the range? The area, oh, range? The area. Uh, the area. So the one I'm looking at purchasing, which is about five thousand um, dollars, um, has a thirty-one minute uh, 
a 31 battery life for 31 minutes and can go up to 10 kilometers radius. Wow. I guess, wow. I guess what I was asking is the linear directions, the dimensions of the drone. How big? How big? Four by four. Um, a drone is about that big. Including the yeah. propellers? Yeah. yeah. I've, seen, uh, I've seen ones that are four feet by four feet. Yeah. So that would that you cannot fly. Sure. Uh, yeah, like I say, it has to be under sure. 25 kilograms. So, so I here's can fly yeah, okay. anything right. of any size up to and including 25 kilograms. So and that's including thing. payload. Sure. If yeah, if I can stand on the drone while it's flying, put me give me a license. Like I have to get a license for that. <laughs> Otherwise, free free air, baby. <laughs> you own the ground. Let us have the heavens. That's all. I'm yeah, saying. yeah. Uh, we're gonna throw it up to Buffalo. Buffalo, we're talking today, just saying how everyone's doing. How you been since last week? What's going on with you? Fine. I've been fine. Thank you. Fine. fine. Nice. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, I know I know you have your daughter's Kristen, so like happy birthday to her. Happy Mother's Day to her through you. Uh, it's good to have you on the show. What's something Thank you're looking you. forward to next week? What's something you're looking forward to? You got the you got a vibe like you're looking forward to something. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking Probably. forward to uh, uh, getting last things uh, ready for a family get together in a cottage by the lake. Oh, where there man. will be about a dozen of us, and my daughter's coming from from Utah with her her son. Uh, so we should have a, a nice time, I hope. Nice. Uh, some boating, some fishing, some swimming, uh, if the weather's good enough. Nice. And uh, that... final plans to put that together. And it is nice to be, I'm not saying post-COVID, because obviously a lot of people are stressing out, but it's nice to be on the the acceleration curve of it and starting hearing stories of people being out with each other and not immediately thinking, wait, are you crazy? So it's great to have, it's great yeah. to have that. Very nice. And, he, and it'll be, everybody will be everybody will be vaccinated up to the uh, the younger than 16. Nice. Very, very cool. Oh. By the way, if you're listening to this now, at least uh, in Tennessee, and Larry, you feel free to support me on this, but uh, uh, Governor said as of May, anyone 16 or up can get vaccinated. There's no more, wow. there's no more age barrier. Just show up, get the shots, see you later. Yeah? Yeah, I, I hadn't heard myself, but I, I certainly believe it. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in Canada, um, of course, I did finally get my appointment, so I'm going on the um, on the 11th on Tuesday, nice. Um, but I'm 57, and so we've got a long way to go before we get down to 16 and above. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, and I'm getting to the point where I'm beginning to see very, very, very short lines in the uh, COVID vaccination booth in my town, and it's a small town, so uh, it's making me at least hopeful that. You know, at least it's only the anti-vaxxers <laughs> who are at risk, which is uh, what we, we will get to the accountability point. You'll understand why I'm saying that later on. But Brooklyn George. Uh, uh, oh, Buffalo, what's up? Can I just say that I I, uh, I think I've said frequently, I've been uh, volunteering at our vaccination center, one of our mega vaccination centers. Nice. That was processing about 4,000 shots a day up until last week, and now it's down to 700. Yeah. So... Ours has really taken a downturn. Same here. Uh, we see more young people, um, mm. parents with their fam with their children coming in, young adults, not 16 year olds yet, but uh, it's definitely moving in that direction. So they're going to close down our mega center, and I'll be put yep. out of a job. Um, but uh, that's a good. That's good. It's a good thing, yeah. And they may just do walk-ins from here on out. Um, Brooklyn, Buffalo. I'm sorry. Brooklyn George, George Brown, can you hear me? How you yes, been? I How have can you hear been? you? Can you hear me? Oh no! Oh, barely. Oh, I, I'm just buddy. returned back to you after uh, my my cable connection just my my my, my cable connection just died. Oh, it's so, dead. So dead. It's still dying. It. Boy, you didn't <laughs> see me here for a few minutes. Okay, okay. You're doing so good. I just want to like encourage you. And George Brown, you may come right back in. My main computer has died. <laughs> Guys, so, I, it's not it's not funny. Least, it's just your your voice is slowed down so slow. Yeah. It's funny. 
That's Bird, you want you'll want to disconnect from the call and come right this back. This is well. This is the lost computer. Turn off your video or something. You got to get yeah. a bandwidth issue fixed. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you this: that leads right into my topic today because I was saying bad things do happen to good people, and we don't have anyone to blame as atheists because we are ultimately just responsible, or at least we have the purview that we can't blame anything supernatural. We can blame other people. <laughs> we can definitely blame other people, and we we do a lot of finger pointing. Well, I won't I won't even say that. But there's no finger. The finger pointing stops at a 90 degree angle. It doesn't go like this. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> right? It's like, this is your fault. It's like, no, well put. <laughs> it always goes here. Right. Yeah, uh, you can say that about believers too. They never point <laughs> up and place blame. Oh, now here's that question. I do feel like there have been a lot of instances where people say like, I guess God's really testing me right now, or there must be a reason like this, like a bunch of bad things happen. It's like, well, you know, God always opens up a window when he closes the door. I'm like, it yeah. still mm -hmm. feels like you have the hopeful pointing at God at that same point. Yeah. Yeah. Any so, excuse. So I am going to say this too. Uh, are atheists accountable? And the way how I see it is when bad things happen to me, I'm willing to blame myself for my part in it. And if, you know, someone else does me wrong, I can blame them. And if I do something wrong to somebody, I will go through out of my way to say, Hey, I was accountable for this injury or personality or emotion or whatever, and go address them. I have a quick story to put this into context. There are a bunch of roofers fixing our apartments, uh, in my place. They have a bunch of nails they threw out on the carpet uh, on the lawn. And I'm like, kids play in that lawn. I don't want a bunch of nails there. Let me go to my job. I'm going to borrow a big magnet, the, the main magnet that we have. I'll put it on like some fishing string and just roll it across the lawn, pick up all the nails and, and, you know, do a nice little service. No one needs to thank me or anything like that. I'll do it real quick. Go to work, get the big neodymium magnet that we got, come back home, put on fish string, pull it across the yard, pick up so many nails, even like magnetic rocks. It was great. Go back in my car, clean it all off. Everything's good. Can't buy anything the next day. My All, all my credit, credit cards, cards have been wiped. Oh, no. And here's the thing. Oh. You don't realize how much you depend. You don't realize how much you're just a caveman in a box until the lights go out. You know, you ever heard that before? I went yeah. from being, hey, I'm a doctor. I'm doing a good job. I got like, I got payments too. I got $7 in my wallet and that's it. I can't go to the ATM. I only have like two gallons of gas in my car. <laughs> I, need, I need about to get new cards. I don't know how to get money. I have no access to money. I have no access to money. At least money. you had so, your internet when you went home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, I had to have a friend come to my home to pick me up to go to exchange and get a new card. And I just got my new card today. But that prepare, was prepare a- Prepare for- Prepare for the next bad thing, and that is when you find out they use some aluminum nails. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very true, very true, very true. So uh, bad thing happened when I try to do a good thing. And a lot of people say karma is like the balancing of forces. I don't, I'm not confident of that. I do believe bad things happen to good people. Bad things are the rewards for sometimes good actions. But you're accountable for it. And I'm fine with the idea of the means that I, the actions that I took, or it made me responsible for the unforeseen consequence. But that doesn't, but with that mindset, I'm also saying I'm also responsible for the good things in my life too. So uh, those stories aside, Dread Pirate, what do you got? Oh no, he's on mute. Oh no, can't hear him. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just got a text from uh, someone that was watching the live stream yeah. and said that the, your guys' voices are really, really loud. As okay. To, so if you can turn down the master maybe or sure. Or that guy can just turn down the volume knob just like two degrees. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're good. Turn mine down. Hope that's better. Sweet. Okay. Dread, now you're on the hot spot. What's uh have you what what are your thoughts? Have bad things happened to you from good actions? Well, have you done anything that made you feel like you're accountable for your actions? Well, actually absolutely. I mean uh I mean, I, I really, I don't know how anyone could think that <clears throat> by virtue of being an atheist, you are uh, excusing yourself of accountability. Um, I just don't understand. I've had people say, well, uh, you don't see many atheists in foxholes and that kind of thing. And it's like, I don't even understand where, you, where that rationale emerges from. It's, mm -hmm. It just seems absolutely ridiculous, but um, that's me. <laughs> Well, I can tell you where the rationale comes from. I being used to being a Christian, as I say, anybody who faces death are going to call on God. Mm -hmm. So if you call on God, you're not an atheist. 
so, and that's where it comes from. But having been uh, in the military, I can tell you there are quite a few in there. Matter of fact, there are whole monuments to uh, uh, atheists and foxholes out there. There are organizations. If you want to find some atheists and not foxholes, just do a search for them. Um, atheists face death all the time, and they have for centuries, millennia. Mm. Um, I'd like to address your, your subject, though, today. Uh, who are we accountable to? Uh, like you said, first and foremost, uh, we're accountable to ourselves. Yeah. We have to live with the consequences of what we do. We mm. can't go to an, our invisible friend and ask for forgiveness and then just start again like nothing happened. Uh, some, some believers feel like they can. Matter of fact, confession is all about that. Mm. Uh, we are responsible to ourselves, our family, our society, and by extension to the world. We're responsible to the law enforcement of our society. Yeah, I mean, we do something really bad and they catch us doing it, we're going to spend a lot of time off the street, as it were. And if we want to distinguish this, then we, should just, we could just stay in the religion and ask for forgiveness, and like so many of them do. So we are, I would say, more accountable than a believer or someone who thinks they can just be forgiven um, by, by God or whatever. It's very true. It's very true. Absolutely. Buffalo, you got any thoughts to share on that? Uh, no, I agree, I agree with everything that's been said. And the, the thing that instantly comes to mind to me is the word mercy. You know, the word mercy to me is the the, the, the key to uh, being religious or not. You know, I, I don't think there's any mercy in this world. I think this world is merciless. And I think it's because of our biological. Well, you're, are you talking about nature, though, aren't you? I mean, there are no, people that are merciful. Well, people are, but uh, I'm not so sure it has the same connotation as the way in which it's used in like, yeah. in a religious context. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel like mercy in a religious context is sort of like absolution, like uh, don't worry about these right. anymore. It's taken off the record. Whereas we still live in a world where a consequence from 200 years ago could still affect us today and how we treat each other. Hey, Larry, what's up? Uh, especially when you're talking about absolution uh, by throwing your blame on someone else. Yeah. Uh, nobody can take responsibility for your um, wrongdoings. Mm. They might pay your bills, but they can't take responsibility for something that you did to someone else. Um, now, hold like on. I take Jesus offense to that. Jesus is supposed to. I take, my I take offense at that because I put my on my Christian hat, and it's like, that's the whole reason Jesus died. Jesus exactly died for our saying. sins. It's a heinous belief that someone else can take responsibility for your wrongdoings, for yeah. your sins. Yeah. Are you saying he died for nothing? How dare that's you? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> that's not a bad, that's, if, if it was valid, it's not moral. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to get in the habit where we do human sacrifices for other people's benefit. Like people should never be used as a means to an end. Or for animals. Oh, or animals. animals. <sighs> I know, I know, but bacon's delicious. God, what are you going to do? Yeah, but they don't so die good. for sin. That's what I'm saying. They are not sacrificed for uh, the sin of the person. Sure. In a lot of cultures, they are. Sure, sure, sure. Just sure. for nutrition. Right. For nutri oh yeah, but for like survival. for deliciousness too. Yeah, for survival. Yeah. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. There's better I know the vegans are going crazy right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> George Brown, let's check back in on you. How you doing? George Brown, are you there? Oh no. Still lagging? Okay. Yeah, still looks a little laggy a little bit. But it's good to see your face. Um, so here's my wrench in the system. A lot of, so the complaint that I really- I don't know yet. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay, okay. Sorry, we still can't, we still can't get you. Yeah, you, you can probably keep the audio. Down. Keep yeah, the audio down. and get rid yeah. of the video. Turn off the video when Be you get it. My sister. Turn off the video, and then we'll, we can try from there, and we'll give it a couple of minutes. No, you turn, just turn, turn off your audio. audio. <laughs> there you go. Leave your audio Turn off on your video. Off video. Guys, this is great. This is exactly yeah, what I'm talking I'm about. The universe is a merciless place. To me? <laughs> 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 <Yes>. Okay. 
All right. So, uh, so here's my thing. The original complaint that I heard this in was in a discord chat where there was an atheist or I'm sorry, a Christian in the room who was basically talking about the tenets of objective morality. And so he says, I'm accountable to this objective list of right and wrong that was established by uh, a higher power that has ultimate good, all that stuff, all that jazz. And so I know who I'm accountable to. I know for what I'm accountable to. And I know the punishment and the, 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 uh, uh, benefits or promises. If I hold myself to this code, it is an absolute code. It's a perfect code and it's not open to the subjectivity of human minds. You know, it's not like, well, you can do this on certain days. You can get vaccinated at these ages. Like, no, this code is the perfect code. Then don't so, speak it. And what, and what? And don't speak it then. And, and don't speak it then. Yeah. And so as long as I follow this objective code, I know who I'm accountable to and it's this God. And as long as I do that, it's good. But this idea that I'm accountable to anybody else is a very subjective, you know, promise because different people have different wants and needs. How do I live in a world that's so subjective? Sometimes I can kill babies. Sometimes I can't kill babies. That seems like a worldview that that Christian didn't want to be in. Larry, what do you think? Well, first of all, you, you, you say that uh, I, if I do the things that God tells me to do, I'll be okay. But how does God tell you? He doesn't show up and talk to you. And there are, if you go to religions, there are thousands of religions and thousands of holy books. The Bible is just one. The Quran is just another one. How, and as far as I'm concerned, they were written by long dead preachers. Not, not God didn't take a pen in hand and write it down. Some preacher wrote it down, whether he was inspired or not is up for mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. How do we know that God put those words oh, there for you to good. obey? It's a good question. What do you mean by these are God's words? How did we right. determine that? What's a reliable test right. to know that? Mm -hmm. Brilliant question. Dred? Yeah. How do you differentiate between delusion and uh, what some might consider a real God? Mm -hmm. uh, there's Those two things are in, indistinguishable uh, in, in my view. I mean, if, like Larry was saying, how do you know a person is inspired by anything other than uh, mental um, disability? Now, right? Dread, I'm going to say at least from, and we're all we're all atheists in this room, but at least from like a SE wordsmithing perspective, you want to make sure you don't compare the the God belief to something that's automatically like connotated to something bad like a, a mental illness or like uh, a delusion I'm, I'm more interested less in differentiating those two and seeing like please promote what you're saying and prove and show me how you're right rather than tell me why you're different from all the crazy other bs stuff that i'm listening to like okay, that. well I, I thought that was the point i was making is that go for how, it go for it go how, for it how do you tell the difference yeah how could you I'm, possibly tell the difference you get the same you get the same cookie from the vending machine whether you press a b or a1 and what i'm saying is if you phrase the question in the idea of like how is your how's your stuff different from any of the other crazy stuff i'm listening to versus how are you right and can you give me a reliable way to figure that out? How you, you know, you're right. You get the same answer, but you also avoid the minefield of, is he saying I'm delusional? Is he <laughs> saying I have a mental disorder? I don't like this person as much anymore. I'm going to believe in my belief even stronger. And it's just like, what do you do? But yeah, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. It's a valid question. I'm just saying wordsmithing is such a fun thing. What's up? Well, player? sure. And, and I wouldn't say, I wouldn't phrase it that way to someone who had uh, a hardcore religion just belief. I mean, right. you would start I've, with I've done enough. Apologies. I've done enough SE to know yeah. that uh, we we try to be gentle and respectful and preserve the dignity of the people that we're uh, engaging. So, I just say this in present company. Now, that is an interesting point, and I think that's a very interesting point because Dread, I've seen you do SE, and I know you're fantastic at it. So, I'm wondering, like, when we and this is a little bit off topic, but I, I want to do it to Larry real quick too. But like, when we do SE, are we genuinely asking the question? how are you right? Or are we just paraphrasing, tell me why you're not wrong in a, in a more politically correct fashion. And what mm -hmm. I'd love for us to do as a movement, or at least as like an organization, not as an organization, but at least more people willing to try this is SE is not a way to cherry, put a cherry on top of a, why are you BS? Like, what's this BS? Why are you crazy? You're not sugarcoating a question. You're not about, it's not about sugarcoating questions. It's about genuinely asking about right. methodologies. And mm -hmm. if they give you a good rationale for that, that should be the case. Right. Larry, what I do you agree. got? 
Yeah, it's about examining the beliefs themselves, uh, the methods at which they reach those beliefs. Exactly. So they, all the questions should be about the method itself, not exactly. necessarily the belief. Oh, um, Larry, <clears throat> perfect. Oh, you took the words right out of my face. You, you, you raised it in my face and you're like, get over here. And you got them out. Um, one of the things that always gets me is how many times have you been talking to a religious person or particularly a preacher and they'll say, well, God told me that blah, blah, blah. Yes. And, you know, the, first of all, my very first question is, did you literally hear his voice? And sometimes I'll say, yeah. Yeah. But how do you know it's God's voice when you hear it? When you hear it, there, in, even according to the Bible, there are many other entities that could speak to you in such a way. It yeah. Could be the, the voice of the Satan or an angel or a demon or anything. When you get, when you give entities magical powers mm -hmm. of telepathy, mm -hmm. how do you know that the voice that shows up in your head is God's? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once you introduce a Satan figure, how do you know anything right. true? Like a, right. a grand deceiver? How do you know any mm. of it's true? George. Mm. Absolutely. Third time's a charm. Keep your video up. Let's go. Vi George, can you hear us? <laughs> oh, man. Are you <laughs> muted? <laughs> Buffalo, I want to ask you a question. Well, we're both scientists. We both love, you know, data that can at least be you know, universally applied, right? Like it doesn't have to be objectively true, but if it could be close enough and useful, we can at least make a useful model out of it. The idea that Satan exists as a character in the Bible, or at least in Christian lore, as a grand deceiver, someone who's capable of deceiving any person, like um, it, that has a mortal frame or whatever, that just makes me feel like no model of truth that's presented in the Bible could be taken at face value because it could obviously be the Satan trying to deceive me. And that means if I don't have the Bible and I'm just feeling inspired, I feel like that could literally just be the devil trying to inspire me. Like, is there a, is there a useful metric <laughs> in a worldview where you can be literally be deceived at any point? It feels like, I feel like there isn't, but maybe right. you have a different perspective. Oh, I don't know. Uh, what are our minds capable of? Hitler, Hitler eventually reached that point, but that's because he was <laughs> mentally ill. So I think mental illness, uh, certain uh, failure of circuitry between the ears can lead to that. But I don't think that many people, well, some people are born with it, I guess. But mm. again, from a biological perspective, I, I think uh, a disease is a disease, and it can go to the point of death, and it can, can stick around and... Uh, and uh, be vicious. Yeah, essentially, the Bible is basically saying it's sick. So that means like <laughs> every character could essentially be just a symptom of a sick person. What's up, Larry? Oh, it's just bottom of the hour. We need to take a break. Good point. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 on PFM right here in Knoxville. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is Sunday, May 9th, 2021. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Founded in 2002, we're at our 19th year. ASK now has over a thousand members and we have weekly meetings starting this Tuesday down at P uh, Bartley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in the Knoxville's Old City uh, out on the patio. We also uh, have Zoom meetings to go along with that for people who can't make it into town. Nice. If you find, uh, you can find us online on Facebook, meetup, knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. Also, you can find Rationalists of East Tennessee at rationalist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to the meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start. Oh, Start one. Right. Where do you want to pick up there, Wombat? Hey, let's talk about the devil. Buffalo, you got... Uh, some devil on your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so I've been reading a, 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 a little bit on the internet about the Satanic Temple, and and uh, they are really doing what all of being dis is being discussed here. But so that, so they're trying to um, have a uh, no, I can't say they want to have a religion. They they want to have a voice like the religions do, without having the basic creed. Uh, and the same rules and, and all of the rituals and so forth. 
but they want to do community good and they're attacking questions of right and wrong um, to the point of going to the Supreme Court. So, but my, my, my curiosity, and I can't find this anywhere, is why did they call themselves that? And, and, it, and it gets to my own problem that I have, and that is how should I go out and make my, uh, my feelings known about a religion without antagonizing people and shutting down the whole discussion, uh, putting up a, a, a brick wall, so to speak. Mm. Um, and it's, it would almost appear that that's what they've done. They use the word satanic. And I'm just wondering if anybody's got a feeling for why they did it this way. Why, why would you start a discussion about uh, uh, religion, atheism, uh, using the word satanic? Larry. Well, theoretically, I mean, according to Christianity, and please, uh, listeners, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he's he represents the loyal opposition uh, to to God and His message and His rule, uh, and so they they took up the banner basically to be in opposition of of that. Uh, however, I am with you. I don't think that we should uh, show that we're buying into that the panoply of of. Uh, entities that they have in their religion by naming an organization after one. Um, I don't think it's uh, a good idea, but I, you know, people disagree with me on that. So sure. yeah, I think it's counterproductive is yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Dred, I know you have some thoughts on this. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's similar to what the pastafarian movement is about. Um, we're just taking up uh, a different kind of stand to in opposition uh, to religious or institutionalized religious privilege. Right, um, but you're not picking I, the, a character from their. Um, that's kind from, of the point exactly. from their religion. Yeah. Yeah. It's, exactly. <clears throat> so an important thing, and of course this was where the judge went uh, in a Supreme Court decision against my uh, my petition, was that uh, you know by virtue of some pastafarians mocking and satirizing religion, that somehow we are disrupting uh, the, the peace of, <laughs> of uh, the country and, and uh, you know, um, putting people down or uh, robbing them of their dignity and all the rest of it, when in fact that is just not the case. Sure. And of course, that would be harder to argue if I declared myself a member of the Satanic Temple, right. um, yep. just by virtue of it is literally taking up the mythology uh, of the Christian uh, faith and using it as a platform to uh, make uh, take their message out. Not that I don't disagree with their message; it's just the way it's wrapped, you know, the way it's clothed. Sure. Um, In are you saying that we shouldn't ridicule them or are you the satanic saying, temple? No, no, Christianity or any other religion. Um, well, I mean, <clears throat> it's ridicule is different than challenging uh, a belief, right? I, agree. I mean, all, all I agree. beliefs are, are up for challenge and mm -hmm. uh, the ideas again, and we talked about this in S. E. Mm -hmm. So Ted just made a point that S E when it's spoken together sometimes sounds like S C. And so uh, we just have to make sure that we're saying like street epistemology or Socratic because, examination or Socratic examination because it gets lost when we speak that way. But um, yeah, no, I think that uh, street epistemology and the in the methods that we use uh, doing it is the best way to undertake those kinds of conversations. I mean, the, the only. Buffalo, I just wanted to round out the idea of like why they do it. It's sort of the point to be, uh, what is the right word? Provocative with that term, because mm -hmm. it draws attention to an idea that there is a lot of religious privilege given to Christians. And so right. if that's the case, then we will use a character from your book and have a seemingly unilateral discussion on religion but christianity doesn't offer satanists the same platform they do for the mm -hmm. the more mainstream christians and it seems to draw a light on the idea of well you you won't 
it's it does it's like if you agree that these religions are equal but yet even when we use characters from your book you're saying yeah you're not the same you don't get to have as many governors you don't get to have as many senators you can't start court proceedings you can't start uh council council meetings on budget for the cities everything starts with a prayer but it doesn't do satanic prayers like clearly there's a preference that is not being unilaterally distributed now you can go mm -hmm. with the pasifarian route and say hey we have a we have this new god that we came up with it's a it's a it's literally a plate a soup <laughs> or noodles <laughs> sorry sorry for <laughs> noodles. Noodles. it's noodles it's noodles it's noodles and people will look at them and be like ha 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 you're making fun of us we're going to contextualize it as you're you're basically taking christianity and making parody it was like no this is our completely separate religion please give us a platform as well and they're like no 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 and you can say mm -hmm. hey i'm from the middle east and i have a completely different god it's like yeah we don't do that too but we can respect you enough so that you can wear your turbans and driver's license right. what satanists are doing or saying is like we have your bible we are using your book and we are pulling quotes from your book and we are and we are taking these figures from your book and just worshiping these figures instead where where's our unilateral where's our piece of the pie it's like I no 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 you're not that, real I wonder, which, wonder which approach is more more uh, effective I, I like the multifaceted approach. I like the mul I like that there are tiers of hardcore rock and you can do soft rock sure. and there's alternative rock. I think yeah. it needs all those voices to make sense. Dredd, what do you think? Well, I was just gonna say that the mission here of the Satanic Temple, I'll read it out. The mission of the Satanic Temple is to encourage benevolence and empathy, reject tyrannical authority, advocate practical common sense, oppose injustice and undertake noble pursuits yeah That's the um, and we've had satanists on the show and they've been super chill and for the most part i feel like the name is there to set up an expectation and when you actually talk with one it's like oh okay okay this is not what the christians are telling me you are and so mm -hmm. when i and here's the here's the catch george regardless of whatever it was they call themselves christians would take offense at it if it wasn't Christianity. So it doesn't matter if it was Pasifarianism or Satanism or screw you, Jesus, you look silly on that T-shaped piece of wood. Like they're <laughs> going to take offense at it either. They take yeah. offense at the word atheist. Like it yeah. is what it is. Larry. Yeah, no, my problem with it is if you, most Christians, when they hear of the satanic temple, that's all they know at that point is the name. Yep. And they, they just take it and run, and, and they, you can't blame them for running to, to uh, thinking that we believe in Satan to worship Satan and follow Satan. I mean, that to me is what it's telling the, the uh, normal person on the street, the normal Christian on the street that doesn't know anything about it, just heard about it. And I think that that, that is not a good message, uh, no matter what they say they're their um, goal is or their their mission statement i think the mission statement is great i think it's worthy i think it needs a better name it just so, just me Larry, i'll throw this out at you uh if the same can be said to atheists or christians appreci appreciation of the word atheist because they'll hear that and they'll think ah here's a person that probably worships satan or hates and god eats babies. Oh, and, that, and eats that, babies that is and not a, that is I, not part of the name the I name know if you, they look I, it up just the word atheist, it'll just say doesn't believe in God. And Larry, and I'm not tricking you. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm w we're on the same side of the street holding the yeah, same but sign. I have to, yeah. I have to, uh, <laughs> I have to verbally defend right. your right. and answer your question. But yeah, that you know is the I, Christian perspective is what I'm saying. Like that. Sure. that no, I understand. What, what I like, I think, to avoid all this is just to call myself a concluder. I'm not a believer. I'm a concluder. You just came up with a new name that is just waiting for more baggage to be put on top of it, for sure. Yeah, yeah I know it's, that. But, it's, but, it's neutral. Yeah. It's, it's, neutral. it's just a new thing that people are going to take. It's like, I'm, yeah, what's up, George? Can you hear me? Can we hear you? Uh, I just want to know if you can hear me. Yes, absolutely. Can you? Yeah, George. Okay, I, so I'm, I'm seeing you guys on my screen. You can see me on your screen, and I'm talking to you on the telephone. He's yeah, got a flip phone, good. guys. <laughs> Oh, no. yeah, <laughs> They're talking about ridicule too. So, <laughs> that's anyway. 2001. Yeah, that's yeah. good. It's a good year. Yeah. It's a good year. Uh, so, so I would. So I would. I'm going to throw this out as well. Um, if there was a Satanist that worshipped Satan, but in the mindset that they're doing it in is 
well, the God that's in this book, the one that calls himself God, the one that drowns babies, the one that kills all of humanity, that makes rainbows to make up for it, the one who does human sacrifices for his own progeny to immorally shift the blame so that most people don't have to do it, and who's had more people die in the name of his son than any other figure in the in the in humanity, like that's probably not the best guy. And the person who's anti that guy is the person I would rather follow. And I and I throw this out as point. A lot. And Matt, Del, Matt Delhunty says this a lot in his um, shows. But like, how do you know if you're reading the Bible, God's the good one and the devil's the bad one? Right. It seems almost in every single instance, it's the devil that's telling the truth, that's trying to be honest with people, that's showing examples of, hey, this guy is evil. We're gonna try. I want to present it in the fact by going to heaven and actually setting up a bet with this guy who says he's good and start hurting people. And he hurts people. I, right. I just suggest it. And he's the one who's hurting Job. He's the one who and he makes a new family to be like, mm -hmm. I killed your family, but here's a new group of strangers yeah, the, and they're your new family now. It's bizarre. Yeah. And I was so. gonna say the book of Job is a perfect instance of where you know essentially God and Satan are just playing with people as a toy. Uh, really pulling the wings off flies, and <laughs> but it's but actually it's, God it's doing horrible. it. It's God the one doing it because because the devil didn't yes. want to do it, or if the devil wanted it and God didn't want it, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. happen. But if God right. wanted it, it's going to happen. So it's God the one that's pulling the wings off, and yeah. it's the devil being like, well, "I hope well, you're seeing this. <laughs> I hope you're seeing that this is a thing that's going on. Do you? Are you sure this is the one you want to worship? Doesn't it look like I'm the guy that's trying to be honest with you? Mm -hmm. I know, Sitson. We've had Christians on the show. Sorry, Larry. We had Christians no, on the show. Okay. Who, who brought up the book of Job as like one of the best books to prove their God was a really benevolent God. And it blew my mind. And we've talked about that before, but I'm saying different people interpret it different ways. But I could see a Satanist reading the Bible and being like, clearly this is the better character. And it's just told out of context as if right. God was. Mm -hmm. I'm worshiping this guy. And I can see there's no harm right. from that point I, of view. It's someone want to mm -hmm. worship at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you've got a couple hours to talk to a Satanist and, and have him explain that to you, but the name itself doesn't do that. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention about Job is that, you know, whenever you talk to a Christian, a lot of times I would just say, uh, yeah, but he gave him all that stuff back. He killed his family and his, his herds and his crops and his house and burned it, everything. But he gave him all that back. No, he didn't. He gave him a new family, a new house, new crops, and new animals. So what is it okay if God just kills your family and gives you a new one, hmm. you know, after testing you? Yeah. And by the way, wouldn't he, an omniscient God know the outcome of the test before he performed it? Absolutely. Uh, Larry, I want to throw this out at you. wouldn't be able to show that to, to a demon? Or we to are... I want to throw this out just real quick. I'm sorry. We give the, we give, we say Satan shouldn't call themselves Satanists, but why do we allow Christians to call themselves Christians as a free pass? Isn't that an expression well, of, no, hey, because it's you're part saying of their Christ beliefs. Borrow, um, you're saying Christ can just borrow people's sins. Like that seems no. objectively immoral. You're saying you like human sacrifices, you like torture, like for three days, like that's terrible. Why would anyone want that? Like that appalls me on a fundamental level, but yet right. we give that the free pass because they're the people in charge. Well, I feel like the, the thing about it is Christians believe in Christ. Satanists don't believe in Satan. Some do. Some do. Okay. There are, there's Lavellian Satanists yeah. and there's, and there's okay. actual, you know, the, there's ironic. the church of, there's right. the church of Satan. Mm. And then there's the satanic temple, and those two entities are different. Okay. And they're both former, called Satanists. The former is which ones the, believe in Satan? Le um, what's his name? The, the Lavellian. Lavellian. Yeah, the Church of Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. it's all Satanism. Like it's generally all this. It's the same umbrella term. So like yeah. it's all good. What's up, Dred? Well, I just had a question from uh, uh, Ted here. He says because we were talking about alternate names for for atheists, True. and uh, and George said concluder. So, uh, is there an alternate name for Christianity? Is there I want to say, I want to say something flippant, but I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> your horns were showing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will say this too: I, there are such things as really good Christians, and and but it tends to be the case that the better they are, the ones that I enjoy being around with, follow to a lesser extent their own dogma. And the ones that follow their dogma very ardently are the ones I don't want to have anything with mm. or to deal with. I made a meme about that. I, I Larry, made a meme about everything. I know he makes memes. It says, 
uh, Christians, Muslims, and other believers are good people in an inverse, inverse relationship to how closely they follow their dogma. It's very true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. true. Good. Dogmatic thinking in general tends to do that. George Brown, I'd love to get your thoughts on the idea of uh, Satanism, if, if you have an opinion on this, like, have you, if you were to meet a Satanist, would you have any qualms or worries ahead of time? And like, what would be your expectations if we said, Hey, we're going to have a Satan on the sh Satanist on the show. What questions would you want to ask them? Are you there? Can you hear me? Are you talking to me? Yeah. I'm talking to you, you, George. To yeah. I'm talking to you, Brown, George oh, Brown. Oh. I didn't realize you were talking to me. I know we got like me this is your this is your Robert De Niro impression, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm having technical things going on. Here. What questions would you um, ask the Satanist okay. if you were to meet him? What would be your expectations if you were to meet well, one? First of all, I would be delighted to meet a Satanist, and um, I would want to know everything about that person. You know, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your beliefs or lack of them, I, you know, I, because I'm always interested in finding and meeting people who are different than me, you know, and, and I'm like that. So yeah. that, I, I would be open to finding out about this person. Hey, tell me. I'm like, all ears. I just want to know. In, yeah. in my book, the devil is just as supernatural as Jehovah or Yahweh. And mm -hmm. if I was to have to, if I don't want to worship anybody, but if I was going to worship one of them, it wouldn't be Jehovah. It would be like, you are clearly crazy. If my only other option is this other dude. All right, you're on here. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think he only asked to be worshiped once to Jesus. And Jesus said no. And he was like, that's fine. No punishment. I'm not going to send you to hell. <laughs> I was here to give you water, but if you don't want it, that's good. I mean, I think you're going to be okay. And he turned out all right <laughs> for the most part. So like, oh, why should, why should the devil define himself by how he is defined in the Bible, in the Christian yeah. Bible or the Jewish Torah? Maybe I'm not even sure he's in there. I, I don't know. Um, sure. But uh, I mean, my main issue is, what do you like? If um, I don't have to sign on to his belief in order to know him. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Like, he takes no for an answer, and it's no big deal. And that is that is a powerful statement, if you got to ask me, like, which one is the better mm -hmm. figure. Dread Pirate. Well, I was just going to say, too, that in the Old Testament, uh, clearly it was a, a pantheon. Uh, it was a pantheistic uh, or polytheistic uh, religion because, you know, the idea that there was, um, you know, angels and God and Satan yeah. and and that uh, you shall not worship any other gods before me, you know, exactly. this, this like kind of thing. Gods. So it, it was clearly from a, it wasn't, uh, monotheistic to start with that's for sure and we know historically that that makes sense right mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, yeah so pirate pirate you said you you want to you want the opposite of of concluder and i simply to me it's believer and i and i as a biologist i think that we have propensities a genetic propensity which drive uh, one toward one extreme or the other. And most of us yes. are in the middle. And, yeah, I, and so Daniel I, I, Kahneman is like that, right? Yeah. So I, I, I believe in belief genes and we don't know about <laughs> them yet because we don't know about much that's in between our ears. But I, I would say that several g generations down the, down the road, if we don't destroy our environment first, mm. we'll have a better idea of, of how those genes function. We'll have and, a concluder uh, gene. Yeah, the concluder <laughs> gene, or the, right. as, as opposed to the 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 uh, networks, neural networks that lead to to uh, believing, mm -hmm. and and uh, that'll describe what we already know, and that is uh, every person is different, both on the outside and on the inside, mm -hmm. um, and the same is true for what's between our ears. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it too is around this idea of agency, and attributing. Right. human agency or animal agency or to intelligence other yeah. yeah to other things that clearly don't have agency but um our our perceptions are are sort of um geared towards interpreting in a very fast way things we don't quite understand like the rustling of bushes what you know if you if you tend to think that it's always the wind and not the tiger you're probably not going to last too long as a species sure. Uh, yep. So, you know, there's a, there's a, sorry. 
No, oh, you're fine. I was just saying, uh, just to take up some of the dead space, uh, going back to accountability, I think, yes, there's probably some facets to our genetic makeup or phenotype that dictate how easy it is for us to learn without inhibitions due to mental disorders or processes or stuff like that. Uh, balance of sodium and potassium in our brains, blood pressure, all sorts of stuff help to dictate the capacity that we have to absorb new information. But I feel like there's such a great wealth of potential that we can't deny that is on ourselves after the fact, after we have like a body to learn and that we are responsible for the information that we take in and for the information that we put out. And we are accountable after a certain point of the prejudices that we may carry or the biases that we have, because we mm -hmm. always have an opportunity to learn better and, and to take red, get rid of that stuff. Uh yeah, every, everything is nature and and nurture, uh, not just one or the other. Sure, mm -hmm. right. Uh, but uh, but uh, but I I really think that there's some hard wiring in there that we don't understand. Sure, we try to explain it, but we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Sure, Dred, you want to finish that thought before we uh, um, wrap up? I lost it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the dog, the dog barking. Um, go on and go. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess. Uh, you're talking about uh, some, uh, intelligence else take and agency in the bushes? Yes, agency, yeah. yes, agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So attributing agency to things that clearly don't have it. Mm. Um, it's like I like what I was saying about the tigers and the, and the wind uh, rustling the the um, the leaves or the sure. or the grasses. And just a reminder that uh, uh, Daniel Kahneman wrote an excellent book um, called uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Oh, and, yeah, it's uh, very is true. A, is an excellent read. I, I believe he won a Nobel Prize for, really? um, you know, for whatever is uh, uh, neurology or physiology want, or something like that. I want to add to the agency thing, too, because there's a really great video called Dumble, Double Rainbow. And one of the funny things is it's a guy walking at a two rainbows stretching across the sky. And he's like, it's a double rainbow. What does it mean? And it's just a really beautiful thing, but I can see myself, you go back, you know, beyond internet, beyond electricity, all that stuff. And you'll see people who look at beautiful things and be like, but yeah, but what does it mean? It's just like, well, it means light refracts. It's like, we don't have that information. We need a shorter, simpler, comprehensive answer. But at a certain point, you need to get rid of those shortcut answers that we came up with, like God, magic fairies mm -hmm. devil and come up with better standards for information george brown what do you got well uh you reminded me of um robert crumb back in the 1970s the cartoonist there was always a character coming to him to his character to his character his cartoon character mr natural uh, and the and the the supplicant would say, Mr. Natural, what does it all mean? Mm. And Mr. Natural would say, which I cannot repeat because this is going to be a radio broadcast. So he would say, it don't mean a word that begins with all right. So, hey, that was the show. Thank you guys so much for everybody coming by. Uh, you can find Mind Pirate, Mind, P-Y-R-A-T-E, on YouTube. Please subscribe. He's getting close to 100. Yep. Buffalo. 88 right now, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. PST. Perfect. Wonderful. And he's also streaming, too. Uh, Buffalo George, hope you have a wonderful cottage trip. George Brown, I want to see you on that keyboard next week. Let's see you play. And I'll check out some dollar store uh, uh, <laughs> lenses we were talking about during the break. Larry, why don't you pick us out? Okay. My own content is found at digitalfreethought.com. You can find these shows and a whole bunch of other things like uh, art, atheist articles and uh, music, atheist music on digitalfreethought.com. If you have questions for the show, send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, if you're having trouble leaving religion behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when that proves that heaven and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll talk to you next Wednesday on this radio station. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. everybody. bye. See you. <laughs>